Question for you, Minister. Um, a, a lot of people are kind of looking at this and wondering how some of this makes sense. So if I'm an unvaccinated individual, I can't go into a restaurant, I can go to the patio. But if I need to use the washroom or pay, I can go into the restaurant. Is there going to be somebody in that restaurant minding where I go after I go into the washroom? Well, I think to explain the consistency for this, I would refer this to Dr. Moore. Uh, thanks very much for the question. It really depends upon the risk associated with an individual. So we uh, have always assumed outdoors is safer than indoors. If you go indoors and it's less than 15 minutes, the risk of exposures to others is much less. You also, as you go indoors, will be wearing a mask. So our typical contact tracing is 15 minutes or less uh, would, uh, would not be a high-risk contact, even if you had COVID. Uh, and, and so hence the reason uh, short visits indoors uh, to a washer, to pay a bill uh, are allowed uh, and, and no one's going to be monitoring that exact amount of time. Uh, it, it, it's based on best evidence. It's also based on some assumptions that it will be 15 minutes or less uh, and that you'll be masked in that environment. And I just wanted to ask a question about enforcement of all of this. I know the Solicitor General is obviously not here. Um, there are a lot of businesses who are already saying we're not going to partake in this, uh, particularly gyms who are saying already we are not going to ask people for their vaccine status. Uh, what level of, of monitoring is the province doing about these businesses and uh, how will it be enforced? Because it seems like the enforcement right now is at, at the point of a disagreement not necessarily proactively seeking out businesses that are saying we're not going to participate in this. This is for the for the deputy premier, if you don't mind. Sorry. Thank you. Well, this is required, and there will be bylaw enforcement officers that will be available that will be doing a lot of the monitoring there and making sure that businesses conform as we're expecting individuals to conform to the requirements. And uh, on the other side of it, if there are any businesses that are concerned that uh, when they refuse entry to a restaurant, a gym, or whatever it happens to be, that if any point they feel uh, threatened, we want them to call uh, 911 as soon as possible to make sure that our uh, uh, police officers can be there to assist. We want to make sure that everyone conforms to these rules. Uh, but if anyone feels threatened, we do have the facilities available for people to seek help. Sorry, Minister, just to follow up on that, that's going to be a, a lot of 911 calls. How do you how do you balance all these people calling or businesses calling 911 over um, an unvaccinated individual versus somebody who legitimately needs uh, ambulatory services? Are, are you is there more money going to uh, these these services to ensure that they can keep up with the increased demand? I don't anticipate the demand is going to be huge because we're asking people to be reasonable. Uh, we have let people know what the requirements are well in advance of the changes being made. People do have until September 22nd to uh, to be vaccinated. We are encouraging everyone who is able to be vaccinated to please go out and do so. If you have concerns, please reach out to your primary care provider to discuss that with them to determine if there is a reason why you should not be vaccinated. But most people, most can be vaccinated. And we're asking them to do that. And again, asking people to be reasonable. Please follow the rules. Again, I don't anticipate there will be huge calls, 911 calls, uh, for that reason, that people understand what the rules are. And we're simply expecting people will follow them. Hi, Minister. Uh, this morning during the technical briefing, a lot of journalists pointed out that it wouldn't be too hard to get a fake doctor's note for a, you know, claiming medical ex exemption. Um, and the response from the ministry was, well, fraud is, is definitely a possibility. Is this something that is of concern to you? And are you going to do anything to address that? Well, we certainly um, anticipate that that won't happen. There may be some situations where it does, but that's only going to be for the period from September 22nd to October 22nd, when the medical exemption will be imprinted into the QR code. But I would ask perhaps Minister Rashid to speak to the more specific issues around that. Thank you very much, and thank you for the question. Yes, so we are actually working on the QR code, as uh, mentioned earlier, that these are some of the guidelines in terms of medical uh, exemptions that eventually will be uh, input into the QR system. And uh, this way, the businesses, when they are scanning 
uh, the QR code will be able to receive the message in terms of whether the individual is uh, eligible to enter the establishment or not. Thank you. My follow-up is for the Deputy Premier. Um, there's been a lot of talk about the creation of safe zones around hospitals. Um, uh, yesterday, I was at the, uh, covering the protest at Toronto General. I saw several patients having to be escorted by police officers through the crowd. So is this something that uh, your government is ready to legislate on or, or get tougher on to protect health care workers and patients who are coming in and out of the hospital? Well, I know there has been some discussion about safe zones. We would have to uh, uh, see what the uh, people who have raised it uh, would actually have in mind before we could say yes to any of that. But right now, what we are looking at is to um, ask people to make sure that if they are protesting, if it's a peaceful protest and they're not interfering with the uh, hospital's operations or people's ability, staff or patients, to come and go inside or outside the hospital, then we are going to um, we're going to work with our police uh, officers as well. They're monitoring the situation as well. If there's some indication that there is any a problem with people having that access, then um, the uh, police officers will take the appropriate action. But we are asking people that if you wish to protest. Certainly you may do so, but do not interfere with the hospital's operations. And I would also say that this is very, very demoralizing to our frontline health care workers who have been working flat out to save people's lives for the last 18 months. And so I think it, it's just very unfortunate that this is happening with the protesters and uh, we would please ask them to to think about the great work that our frontline health care workers are doing and and uh, and please um, stop these protests because they're uh, really um, very discouraging to our frontline health care workers we'll go to the phone lines just a reminder one question one follow-up your first question comes from Matthew Bingley with Global News please go ahead Hi, Matthew. Hi, Minister. I, I'm just wondering, when it comes to the medical exemption notice, uh, on the technical briefing we heard that there was a sample that was going to be sent out to uh, doctors if they choose to use it, but it's not being required. I'm just wondering why that decision was made to not have a simple form to actually make sure that there is no fraud when it comes to these uh, notes being written. Um, I'm going to refer that to Dr. Moore. Thank you. Thank you very much for that question. So, um, very pleased that the Registrar for the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Ontario has come out with guidance uh, on medical exemptions uh, for COVID-19 vaccination. Uh, the Registrar has identified two and has communicated that to all physicians in Ontario. Uh, the first being a severe uh, allergic reaction to any of the components confirmed by an allergist. Uh, the second being uh, inflammation to the heart, the heart, um, the, the sac around the heart called myocarditis or pericarditis. Uh, those are the two major medical exemptions that have been identified to date. Uh, there may be a third category associated with a adverse event following immunization um, for specific neurologic uh, or other ongoing symptoms, but those would be investigated by specialists. So very, very few exemptions uh, that are listed, and the, and the registrar has defined that you must put um, the exact uh, reason for medical exemption as well as the duration that that medical exemption uh, should be in place uh, as well as identify yourself and your college uh, uh, identification. So there are forms that will standardize this for nurse practitioners as well as physicians and a standardized exemption format. Um, if there is abuse of this uh, by physicians or uh, nurses of the extended class, uh, there may be professional um, um, discipline for them uh, and if there's fraud there is a process through uh, the reopening of Ontario Act enforcement uh, that can deal with the fraud aspect. Follow up? Yeah and, and perhaps this is for uh, Minister Rashid. I'm just wondering uh, earlier he said that come October 22nd there's the possibility of using either the digital side or the paper uh, option that will be on uh, beginning next week, but w when you were specifically talking about the QR code that will be given for those medical exemptions, will people w with those be required to use the digital system or is there still an option to go back and forth? 
I, I believe uh, when we look into the uh, QR code, uh, the medical exemption is going to be embedded. It's the data that we are taking from the Ministry of Health and putting into the QR code system. And eventually, yes, I mean, if uh, somebody doesn't want to use the QR code because uh, people have the choice, then I'm sure uh, at some point Ministry of Health will be looking into uh, issuing a, an exemption a certificate. But from a technological side, the QR code eventually will have uh, a system in place uh, that will allow uh, for medical exemptions uh, to be embedded into the QR code system. Next question. Okay, next question comes from Rob Ferguson with the Toronto Star. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm just a little, um, uh, could use a little bit of clarification on the medical exemption forms. Uh, Dr. Moore was just saying that if anyone is is abusing these on the, on the medical side, like giving an exemption where it's not warranted, um, there there could be professional uh, 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 discipline. How will that, that get discovered? Would that get discovered if a doctor's or a nurse practitioner's practice is being audited? Uh, because otherwise, I think these letters... Uh, would be, uh, or the details would just be between the doctor and the patient? Uh, well, they will uh, be uh, reviewed. There will be, uh, as the um, things are uploaded to the uh, the code, the QR code, that there will be um, some uh, review of what's going on. I think I would refer that to Minister Rashid to answer specifically how that would be dealt with. 